Hello and welcome back to part two of the interview with the parents of Stefan Stearns. This is so good. So sit down, get your coffee and buckle up. Once again, I'd just like to credit this to Plunder True Crime. Please go over and subscribe. She does some really great work. They look marvelous. And, but then I got it and I think this is really probably too juvenile for me to wear. It's called Mermaid's Beads and it's made out of sea glass. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a, a dual colored bracelet and they had the stud earrings and the same thing. And they, they were kind of opalescent. So they're really neat. It's by no goo and it's, it's mermaid tears. But um, I said, you know, these are still in the box. I've never even worn them. I said, why, why spend money on something? This is something she would really like because I, I knew her enough to know this was something right up her alley. And I said, you know, this is this is ninety dollars worth of a gift. You know, this is gonna sit where it could be doing good someplace, somebody could enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So just gave him the box and said, "You are you want to get for Apple?" He said, "No, I'll just take them like this." So. How did you guys come hear about everything that happened on Monday? <clears throat> so, I tried reaching Stephen. He called me when he got to Kissimmee Sunday. Any idea when he called you? Uh, I know exactly because I wrote out the timeline this morning. Okay, six forty-eight p.m. Okay. Um, but then I noticed on some pass that he was out around 8.38. Oh, darn. So he got in kissing me at 6.48. But I thought I said he didn't get to the house till 9 p.m. Forty-eight, And there were two some pass uh, tolls. And I said, well, maybe they had gone out or something, but I said, hmm, okay, that's a little weird. Um, so that, uh, I tried to get a hold of him several times Monday, Monday morning, or maybe noonish or so, maybe as late as 2.30 ish or something. And then I got a call from a 317. Mm -hmm. And his voice sounded a little off to me. Um, I thought, well, maybe he was just, you know, tired and then maybe he didn't get a good night's sleep or what have you. And then during that conversation, he says, oh, by the way, I had a flat tire. <laughs> Radar goes up. I go, what do you mean you had a flat tire? Where could you have gotten a flat tire? And I'm not going to say you can't pick up a flat tire anywhere, mm -hmm. but he's just driving from here to the apartment and shouldn't be driving anywhere else, per se. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I I just got a flat tire. Okay, where? 192. And 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 then he described the fact that the tire was so flat that he he ran the rubber off the wheel. Mm -hmm. Okay, 192, plenty of places to pull over and you're driving the, the rubber exactly. off the wheel. You've got a flat, you feel that flat. You feel it. So why would he not stop? So then he described that he was changing the tire and that the, didn't have it set right and the jack collapsed somewhat and trapped his thumb between the frame and the, and the jack and didn't hurt himself severely. And I think the conversation lasted about three minutes. And I said, well, let's, let's get the car into to a tire place and, and see what's going to cost to re repair it. I'm sitting there counting. It's going to cost me several hundred dollars for this now. Mm -hmm. and, and then that was it. And then 454. Um, I'm just getting out of the car, meeting a customer. I'm going, to, I'm going to take him into a house, and he calls, and he says, uh, "I'm in. I'm en route to Maddie's grandmother. There's been an occurrence." I said, "Well, that's a strange word to use, but okay." Um, and then I'm thinking, "Well, this is weird. Two events in one afternoon: the flat tire, and now this." And so he says, "Well, I." I took Maddie to school this morning and I dropped her off uh, just out from the school. 
uh, because Maddie didn't want to be seen dropped off in front of the school because I'm not driving a cool enough car. I said, okay, well, understand that, teenager, peer pressure, what have you. Mm -hmm. And he said, I watched her, I watched her walk towards the school of Valley Review Mirror as I pulled away. And, and so then he goes on to describe that she wasn't, uh, it's been reported that she wasn't in school. Like we went to pick her up and uh, she wasn't there. Then we come to find out she had been in school all day. And then uh, he starts to describe um, that the area is a high abduction area. It, kids, kids are stolen for abducted, kidnapped for sex trafficking. And um, um, that there's a good chance that she's been abducted. Mm -hmm. You know, typical questions. Uh, well, what have you done to try to locate her? Have you contacted her old friends, social media? Where's her phone? Oh, she left her phone at, at home. Oh, okay. Yeah, she does that from time to time. And uh, it was a three-minute conversation, and he he was he was sobbing. He was really sad and upset that he was holding himself responsible for this. Mm -hmm. Same routine that he did in that Tuesday interview. I think he was rehearsing it on me, mm -hmm. and it was exactly the same routine, same explanation the whole deal. And so then I kept in touch with them throughout the evening because they were waiting for police to show up and, and it was hours and, and I just kept checking in, any news, any news. And then, um, and then that was it until, until Tuesday. And then I didn't talk to them again until, until Tuesday, maybe it was the afternoon. And um, again, just trying to get an update, what's going on? And then, and then as the day expanded, then the police were now more involved. And uh, there's interaction between, I guess, your department and, and the two of them. Mm -hmm. Did when, backtracking to Monday, so you talked to him, you said you tried calling him. When you tried calling him, did it call go right to voicemail or did it ring a few times? Uh, combination of all of that. I mean, let me get the, my notepad. Uh, and by the way, Jim had mentioned several times that Maddie was going through a phase where she didn't want to look cool, uncool, and that it had become their routine to drop her off one block from school and pick her up one block from school. And she told you this? Yes, yes. And I never said anything about it being a high traffic area or anything like that. She just said, "You can. it's a straight shot. We can see the school. There's an overpass. We make sure nobody's in the overpass. You know, mm -hmm. you know. and is, so we just walked. Stefan said he took her by himself. And then in the interview, she said, We brought him off. Mm -hmm. She said it several times. And so I, I don't know if. Do you want any conjecture or no? Mm -hmm. The conjecture is that she and Maddie are the same size. Mm -hmm. She wore Maddie's clothes with the hoodie up to show the cover of the dark hair instead of the light hair. And that was Jim himself sitting at the church in the picture. Mm -hmm. Because I. So even the parents, his parents, think it was Jim on that video outside the church with the shorts and the green top. Right? Walking away. So, that is very similar to a lot, what a lot of people were saying at the beginning of this. Could it have been Jen in that car park? Because I haven't heard of anyone coming forward, like any child coming forward and saying, or parents come forward and say, that was my daughter that you see on that camera. We dropped her off, she sat there for a while, and then went off to school. No one's come forward, to our knowledge. Perhaps they have. Perhaps they haven't, we don't know. But there's definitely got to be some charges somewhere along the line for Jane. There's got to be. 
Anyway, let's carry on. Obviously, from what we've heard, Maddie was already gone by that time. Mm -hmm. So this this elaborate charade put on for everybody's benefit. Mm -hmm. And she's cool, calm, and collected, and he's a he's a he's a sobbing wet mess. I know he's going down. He's going down anyway. For the charges against him. What they found on his phone and everything else. He's going down for life for that. But did he murder her? Did he on alive, Madeline? It makes you think, doesn't it? So, my call to him at 225 was two seconds, so no connection. Okay. And then he called me at 317, and that conversation lasted three minutes. And you said he was upset at that time, or he seemed? No, he seemed he, he seemed off, and I said, well, maybe, you know, the anxiety medications or what have you was keeping him somewhat kind of flat, monotone in a way. Mm -hmm. Nothing oh, a beat about it. And then, oh, matter of factly, I, well, I had a flat tire. We talked about that and then and then, did he plan on taking the car to a tire shop did you guys have that him, plan or? i told i told him to i said you, he's driving on the donut and he, we both confirmed that you know the donut wouldn't last long and that you know he needed to get that quickly replaced and i expected him to do it i, I didn't expect it to for him to do it that day because that's not stefan's modus uh, operandi I, I expected him to do it the next day uh so then I didn't hear from him until he called me at 4.54. Mm -hmm. And that conversation lasted three minutes. And, you know, as I said, uh, I, I heard this 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 uh, story about him dropping a, her off at school and and the whole abduction thing. And, and I heard that even more later in the evening. But I, 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 I thought to myself, how strange these two events happened and, and within a short time of one another that afternoon. Did you question him about it or no? No, I didn't think about it. You know, when the call came in, he starts telling me that this is just a thought I had. It's kind of strange that coincidence that there were two two incidents like that in, mm -hmm. in that afternoon. Okay. So moving on, you spoke to him around four-ish. That's when he said Maddie's gone missing. Yeah, more close to five. Okay. Um, and then you spoke didn't speak to him again until the following days. No, I talked to him for seven minutes to 602. Okay. And 602 and then again for five minutes at 622. And is that just to get updates or yeah. what's he, what's the conversation you're having? Well, it was me time? making it, it was me. It, he called me at 602 and again, just briefing me to letting me know what's going on. Uh, there was an out call at two minutes at 618 and then another one at 622 for five minutes and both of those i was making the calls and then nothing again until tuesday at 12 16 three seconds there and then out at 632 one minute i don't even sure if we had even a conversation so that was that was uh and then after that no more no more calls from his phone now jen's called me on her phone okay did they tell you why um, there was a conversation about whether, uh, the police wanted his phone and whether he should give it to him. And I said, do you have any reason not to? Mm -hmm. And he said, no. And I said, then give me your phone. Let's get this cleared up. You know, what really upset me was in one of the conversations I had with him when it became apparent that he was going to be a person of interest. I said, well, you had your phone. You can document where you've been. Mm -hmm. Oh, I left my phone at home. Okay. Uh, let's backtrack. Were you anywhere that a camera could have caught you? What was, where'd you go? And uh, it didn't sound like he went anywhere that a camera could track him. So I said, well, well, I understand that, but I'm not sure, you know, where, where a camera would have, would have been. But, um, you know, thinking he was innocent, you know, trying try to help, you know, pinpoint where he was so he could document his whereabouts. Because of my understanding, there was a two hour, there was a two hour gap mm -hmm. between when he supposedly dropped her off. Stop. And then um, 
when he returned home because he said he called Jen at 10 17. Mm-hmm. Okay. And in, in, in that fact, my understanding why he called Jen at 10 17 was to get back into the community because she had to call him in. Mm-hmm. He didn't have his clicker. Okay. Is he tech savvy? But we'll be looking at some more interviews and the security guard at the gate said he had the clicker and that there was a a girl or someone sitting in the passenger side of the seat of the car and he he said she looked like she was asleep but you couldn't tell because the hair was over her face. So we know that's a lie because he that thing where he said he had to get Jen to get him let him in that was a lie because he had the clicker my impression no but i'm hearing you know hearsay from other people that he may have been but when he told me that he was doing a os update on his phone and it accidentally wiped out his phone i I cried bullshit Mm -hmm. you know but you know there's always that one one off it could be you know but when he starts saying we i I accidentally pressed the button to reset it. Then I knew it was bullshit. <laughs> That's not in the process of an OS update. You, you just say, yes, go ahead and do it, and you leave it alone, and it updates, and it lets you know that your phone's been updated. End of story. None of this other bullshit. Did, do you pay for his phone, or does he pay for it? I pay for it. Did you want this coffee? Yeah, would you put some cream in it? Blonde like you, you know, and uh, you it in the microwave for 38 seconds. Um. How did you get to Kissimmee? What is it with putting it, your coffee in the microwave? Or when you make a cup of tea in the USA, you put you warm the water up in the microwave and throw a tea bag in. Yuck. Like what made you go to Kissimmee? Okay. So, um, I got a call. Uh, I got a call at 930. Um... And then I think that's when uh, that discussion took place about it, whether to give this phone to the police or not. Mm-hmm. If you got any issue with it, give them the, give them the phone. Give them the phone. And then I got a call. Uh, and then I went to bed. I, I was t- 10 or something. I'm all tucked to the bed. I got the boys with me. And I, I may have been partially asleep because I had my phone in silent. And then uh, I woke up because the phone was vibrating and then my, uh, well, my watch would have been in the office. So the phone was vibrating. By the time I got it, there was no connect. So then that was at 1042 and then I made an out call at 1043. And then I'm being, uh, the conversation was about, uh, you, you need to come up here. And who says that? Uh, they both did because they were on speaker. Okay. And Steph said, hey, you need to come up here. And I said, okay. Um, I said, you know, we, so we discussed, you know, they were being kicked out. They didn't have a place to stay. So I said, well, we need to figure out where to, where to go for, uh, where to stay, what have you. And so uh, I'm jumping in the shower, packing a bag, talking to Deb, you know, making plans. I did say the other night on the interview with Jen when they mentioned that they've got to leave the house. Oh, you, well, you've got a mother, you've got a sister, but oh, but they don't like Stefan, do they? They don't like Stefan leave and I wish I did it uh, just after midnight. Um, I tried to make a call to them at 11.56. It went to voicemail and then I, I called her back at, uh, now we're into Wednesday, so I called her back at 12. 12 to let them know I was on my way. And uh, then I also called my wife because when I left, the front door, if you notice, has an electronic keypad on it. Mm-hmm. That's why I think it's great. No. no. Okay. okay, thank you. Um, it wasn't working. And it, uh, it's electronic and it's batteries in there since the day we moved here, so four years old. So mm-hmm. when I tried to lock it, it's not flashing or anything. I did get it to lock, but I wanted her to know that, hey, if you go out, you're going to have to come back in through the garage door. And mm-hmm. the only way to do that if you had a clicker in your remote in your, in your visor. But you weren't going to be able to get in through the, through the front door. Mm-hmm. Um, and, then, uh, and, then I told, and then I got a call from them at 118. Last for two minutes and then at 151, 50 seconds because I arrived at the hotel. 
what were they the conversation at the 118 area what was that conversation about just confirmation of where they were and where we were staying and, and the address of the hotel because okay. it was out off of west of uh disney off the 429 and from what i understand did you pay for the hotel or did they pay for it? they paid for theirs uh and i paid for mine but then it said a prep pet friendly hotel or pet friendly if you pay $150 for the night. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, all right. So I, I paid for the, for the dog to stay. Okay. Their dog. Yeah. Okay. Well, I actually reimbursed her for it. Mm -hmm. All right. And when you got to the hotel, you had conversations with Jen and Stefan? I'm assuming. Yeah, we were just greeting, you know, gave, gave Stefan a hug and, uh, you know, chit chatted for a few minutes. I was busy checking in because they had already completed their check in. Um, they went up to their room. They were on the opposite end of me, but we were on the same floor. I went out to the car, you know, park my car, get my stuff and bring it in and go to my room. And then I went to their room and spent about 10 minutes with them, no more than 15. And then uh, I was sent back to my room to go to bed. What were the conversations when you were in their room? I don't really recall. It was just, uh, yeah, everybody settled in, everybody okay. You know, we'll just meet in the morning and, and uh, you know, see, see what unfolds at that time. I'm sure there was going to be some more interviews or what have you. Mm -hmm. I planned to go to the office, our corporate offices in in, uh, in Orlando, so I, I planned to go. Mm -hmm. um, so I was up uh, 6.30, 7 or so, 6.30, then I left the hotel around 7.30 to go to the office. Okay. When you left to go to the office, was Steven and Jen still there? As far as I know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I come to find out later when I get a phone call from Jen uh, around 10 o'clock, 9.48 or so. I think it was. Um, uh, 9.49, she called me, it lasted for about a minute to tell me, asked me if Stephen was with me. Mm -hmm. I go, no. Well, he's not here. How long has he been gone? Maybe 25 minutes. Um, I said, okay, well, all right, maybe he's out running around, whatever. Um, so then I get a call from her about uh, at 10 17. Uh, don't recall what that conversation was about. Then I, uh, there was another call, 10 47, and I think. Uh, it, 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 matter of fact, I try to recall what what time we talked about uh, his not being there, and then I called back and said, uh, "Well, I, I told him to go down to the lobby. If he was gone for twenty five minutes. Go down to the lobby. Maybe he's down there. Mm -hmm. Seemed logical." Uh, and then after I hung up, I go I call her back and said, "Are your car keys there?" And she said, "No." I said, "Okay, interesting." So then I get a call back from her later and say that the detective had called and said they were going to come over within the hour uh, to, to visit with them. And I said, OK, I'm on my way. So I left the office and, and drove over there and thinking, well, he's going to be in a world of hurt if he's not there when they come back, uh, because they'll probably put a bolo out on him and then just decide to arrest him because he, he's wandering around. You know, what's he doing? Mm -hmm. Show up for another 15 or 20 minutes. Okay. And then I, uh, do you know if Jen's car has a GPS in it, nav system? It does, yes. Okay. Well, that's part of his life. So, uh, you know, he came back in and he said, well, I got lost in the back roads of Disney, no GPS or what have you. And uh, I didn't think about this till later. I thought, wait a minute, Jen, Jen's got a newer car. Most of them have a GPS system in it. So because he didn't have a phone, obviously he didn't have hers. Uh, he was trying to wind his way back to the hotel, uh, but couldn't because he didn't have a GPS, when in fact he did have a GPS. Mm -hmm. Now, there was talks of that he may have came here that morning. Well, so uh, when I finally got in to see Alex Wednesday evening, um, he said, uh, what exit do you get off of when you uh, come, come back to Northport? tested my exit numbers and I said, uh, I think it's 179 Toledo Blade. And he said, did you know that Stefan was in Northport at 745 that morning? I said, really? No, I didn't. Then I later learned it was really 630-ish, mm -hmm. which meant that, uh, and I had my timeline all screwed up. I thought I went to, they parted their room at 330 when in fact it was more like 230. So 
I was thinking, gosh, I just went to bed and then he turned around and got out of there and went down to down to Northport. Mm -hmm. But when I learned about that, um, I couldn't imagine why. And, and then Alex is telling me, well, we we have information that he went to your storage unit. So that led us down a rat hole and then I found out that was completely wrong. That access storage uh, uh, facility had been accessed for two weeks. And that was me going to put the lock back on that I had incorrectly relocked my unit mm -hmm. two weeks ago, now almost three weeks ago. So that was that was wrong. The time of his entering Northport was wrong. It was really an hour earlier, hour and 15 minutes earlier, and he never went access the storage unit. So I'm sitting there thinking, well, he must have been really disappointed if he was coming to this house because he couldn't get in the front door and that door was locked. And he knew that... Uh, that if he came in, chances are he would put the dogs on high alert mm -hmm. and set them off, which would have got her up. And I asked her, I said, what would you have done if Stefan was standing in the middle of the house and you weren't expecting him? It's like, what are you doing here? And God knows what would have taken place at that point. Why, why he was here. Dad? Why, why are you here? Mm -hmm. you know, I well, why did I go to, why did I go to Orlando? Because I can tell you the amount of time I spent with him, aggregately, mm -hmm. three occasions, it was a total of 30, 35 minutes. That's the amount of time that I, I had spent with him. Because when he got back to that hotel room, the both of them went back to bed and they slept. Mm -hmm. And there was no waking the dead. And up until two o'clock, I'm trying to, trying to get him to eat something. Jen and I went down and, and had some lunch, but uh, I had no idea why he was here other than to get in the house to get something, maybe try to steal some money for me, maybe steal something of value to sell it, what have you. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had no idea. So when you on so on Tuesday when he got eventually made it back to the hotel, you're saying you and Jan went to go eat, but Stefan didn't want to go. Or? No, you couldn't wake him up. He was he was out of it, dead to the world. Okay. Now I was told by Northport PD when they came and talked to you, I'm assuming you one night uh, that. You may have mentioned the dogs barking sometime throughout the night. They went on high alert, at, and I looked at my watch as I was in here alone. 3.19 in the morning. I had all five of them sleeping with me since he wasn't here to sleep with the boys. Mm -hmm. They all went from dead asleep to springing up in the air and standing on all four feet, all of them looking at my window mm -hmm. and, and giving the war bark. That's not a war bark. That's mm -hmm. a wolf. Yeah. Um, when they do it, it's a sound that that will make your skin wake the mm -hmm. And and I didn't have the gun in my room. I don't usually use it. Have I don't usually keep it in there. I had to come and look for a flashlight. I let all the dogs out here, and then I did not unlock the security lock on the door. I just took the flashlight and went like this to see if, if there was a critter in the yard. Mm -hmm. We have bobcats. We have all kinds of stuff out here. So didn't see anything in the yard. Didn't see anything out the front. Went and looked through the office window. Didn't see anything out there. So didn't see a car. I thought, okay, well, we have, we must have had a critter and I just missed it. Mm -hmm. You know, they dig holes and come under the fence and drive the dogs nuts. Rabbits, especially. We had one last night. And you're saying that your code to the storage facility was not used on um, that Tuesday? No, the, the storage unit, they, Northport police told me was, uh, they misread it, but they said the last access, because I didn't, I didn't think Stefan had my access code, unless when we were there in December, he decided to memorize it. Mm -hmm. um, and I keep it in my, in my contacts. Uh, cause obviously I don't use it that often. I'm not going to commit to memory, but, uh, I was there two weeks ago because they called me up and said, Hey, you know, we're doing an audit. We got, we got an audit. It's going to happen. And we check all the units and you didn't lock your unit properly. So, you know, it's a slide it over, bolt it, and then it's got two holes. You drop your padlock in there and lock it. Well, apparently I locked it on the outside. Mm -hmm. I didn't think I did, but anyway, it must have. So I went over there the next day and, and, uh, and, uh, properly locked it. So any reason why he would come here? Does he have any other friends or close people that he would? Well, I mean, he has a limited number of friends. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Maybe he was going to hook up with one of them. Frank being one of them uh, uh -huh. is the one I, I know that he's 
uh, is closely associated with and when he goes out, it's with him. And we haven't heard of anybody else that he's socializing with, so I'm assuming he would have gone out with Frank. But other than just gaining access to this house, and there's there's no way he would have broken in here because mm-hmm. uh, impact window's not going to do that. Um, and the front door not working, so he would screw blue tattoo. I checked the car, you know, after the Northport police left to see if there was any marks on the door to see if he was trying to try the private car open, but mm-hmm. nope, I didn't see any marks on it. So I, I, he was, I guess he was here for an hour and 15 minutes or so before he had to make tracks to get back to Orlando, but had no idea what he did for that amount of time. Maybe he came down here thinking he would throw the police off. Mm-hmm. Uh, if they if they obviously found a way to track him or something, maybe they said, well, he disposed of the, the body or disposed of something down here, but I have no yeah. idea. Other than just coming here and stealing something from us. You don't know if he has his own credit cards or anything like that, do you? He has one, one maybe two credit cards at best that are his mm-hmm. and nothing else. Okay. I don't think he may have... He may have, I gave him access to a second Chase account that I, that I set up for him. The way they talk. He shouldn't be relying on his parents. He's 40 years old. But I do believe maybe he, Debbie and Chris had arguments over Stefan. I really do. Anyway, let's carry on. But it hasn't been used in for whatever time. So if he has that, it doesn't have any money in the account. Mm. So other than that, that's the only thing I would know he had. I gave him, uh, uh, he would have use of the gas card, but I had it made him fill it up and give me the card back. So he didn't have use of that. Mm-hmm. Okay. What banks does he have? Chase and... Well, he has a, he has a second account that I set up, but he has his own account with... Uh, 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 Disney Partners Credit Union. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We don't have any access to that, so I don't know what he's got in there. What he got. Have you looked to see if there was any phone activity on your account that you pay for anytime during that Monday, Tuesday area? I didn't look at his account. Um, uh, to answer your question, no. But then uh, a Wednesday, uh, since he didn't have his phone, I had a spare phone I used for business, Mm -hmm. which I think you guys have, iPhone mini. And I said, here, use this until you get your phone back. Again, thinking everything's innocent, what have you. Um, And so I gave that to him around 3 o'clock Wednesday afternoon and said, use this. And and then um, we went downstairs and met with the detectives and then – they were escorted away, and then the last, last, last time I saw the phone, other than him calling me mm-hmm. to tell me that the detective said when they pull into the Orange County Operations Center, they're going to go straight back. And I go, oh, okay, and I'm to go to the left and park out in front of the main building. Mm-hmm. We're going there for the press conference. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I get there, and then I'm expecting to meet up with Jen and Stefan to go up to the press conference. And then when trying to reach them, Stefan's phone is dead at this point. It's turned off. Finally, finally, Jen responds to me, and they said they're making arrangements to go inside. You'll get a pass. They'll take you upstairs to the press conference. So by the time I got up there, it was over. Now I'm just trying to, where is everybody? Mm-hmm. And But the only call I, that came in, because I wiped out everything that I could think of to wipe out, because if he's going to have access to that phone, like, I've got my contacts in there where I put all my passwords and username mm-hmm. and passwords. Uh, I know the store and passwords, but you know, I want to put access to it or something, whatever, or other information. What are you gonna do? No. No, just no, just say. Just yeah, say. Just tell me why. So uh, and then anything else that would have been uh, confidential that I didn't want to have access to, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, I deleted it off of there. Because, um, again, I only expected them to use it for, for a short time because the police said in the lobby, hey, we're going to give your phone back, we're going to give your car back. Well, I knew what, I knew what that was about. They were, mm-hmm. they were going to escort him without handcuffing and what have you. They wanted him to be comfortable and mm-hmm. what have you. So 
I didn't expect to lose my iPhone as a result of that. Which you should be able to get that iPhone back, but I'll double check and let you know. Well, I was going to say that. Yeah. Because yeah. I asked Alec about it. He said, well, it's being transferred to Kissimmee. He said, and I said, well, this is going to be a slow process. So anyway. No, we should be able to get you your iPhone back. Yeah. His other phone, no. No, no, no. Uh, we expect that. No. What about the car? The car, no. No. Yeah, we already know that. Yeah. I, I've already kissed that goodbye. Okay. Okay. Um, we, we use that as a poodle ambulance. Yes. This right. is so interesting. What he says there. Because the, you know, the dogs go to bed or if they have some surgeries or the uh, puppies or what have you, mm-hmm. the back seat, you know, could be smeared with puke, blood, and what else. But it, we call it the poodle ambulance. Did when you gave Stephen this car to go to Kissimmee, clean inside? No, 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 no. It's the poodle ambulance. Uh, you know, we're not going to have that car detailed, you know, and then he, he's using it. And of course, Debbie had a bunch of her stuff in it, but no, that car was not clean. Okay. And I, and I said, well, if they're going to, if they're going to, if, if forensics is going to go over that, I mean, you know, I tried to tell somebody, I said, you know, it's a poodle ambulance. There's going to be some leftover puke blood or what have you that we weren't able to get out of the seats because they're perforated. Mm-hmm. So somebody, I hope somebody doesn't get too excited when they hit, hit on something, but it's animal blood mm-hmm. as far as I know. I must admit, when I seen some pictures yesterday on another YouTube channel, it had like a green plastic bag or whatever on the floor crumpled up. And when you zoomed in on it, it looks like blood on it. And there was blood on the floor, specks of blood on the floor and things like that. But... She was never in the back of that car. She was always in the front of the car until he took her to some car park where he then transferred her from the front of the car to the boot of the car. Anyway, I'm going to stop it here because we're hitting 40 minutes, okay? And I'll do a third one. Sorry about this, but I just want to keep them as short as possible so that you're not sitting around buckled up like for so long. So, third one will be out very soon. This one will be up very soon as well. So, till then, see you then. <laughs>